Before I talk about this week's Raw, I wanted to give some of my appreciation to the WWE for something. Thank you. Thank you for doing, in my opinion, the right thing, and that is creating this Warrior Award so that way you have a reason every year to induct a special individual into the WWE Hall of Fame. Sometimes it's about things bigger than professional wrestling or sports entertainment or whatever. And I personally couldn't be more pleased, as many of you might imagine, with the announcement that Conor the Crusher Mahalik will be that inaugural recipient of the Warrior Award and therefore going into the 2015 WWE Hall of Fame class. Now, I know some people are going to be angry about this because we just wouldn't be wrestling fans if we couldn't find something to bitch about. Period. I most certainly am not. This is something that I wanted to happen. This is something that I asked for to happen. And this is something that the WWE has delivered. You can't tell me you didn't watch that video package on Monday night and weren't moved in some different way, shape, or form. You know, maybe even dust flew into your eyes, perhaps uh, some wetness it, um, was emitted from your tear ducts. You know, just, just saying. But a great moment, and it'll be really cool to see how this all plays out at the Hall of Fame event on the night before WrestleMania 31. It was great to see the WWE put this video package together in honor of him. It was great to see the crowd have such a unanimous reaction uh, to this announcement. It was good to see Connor's brother and dad there in attendance so that way they can live this moment. It should be something that's very therapeutic for them, I'm, I'm assuming, and very helpful for them in their you know, grieving process. And like I said again, I most certainly, for all the things that I crap on WWE for, and all the things that I go out of my way to knock them for, I am going to commend them when they deserve to be commended, just like I condemn them when they deserve to be condemned. And in this particular case here, big props, major kudos to the WWE for, in my mind, doing the right thing. Damn what any of these fucktards say. I'm fully on board with Conor the Crusher being one of the headliners of the 2015 WWE Hall of Fame induction class. Yeah, I, I'm sure I'm not alone in thinking this. I'm sure I'm not alone in saying this. But this week's show kind of sucked. Kind of sucked very badly. I mean, you're supposed to be building to your biggest, most important show of the year. And in a lot of ways, to me, this show was a direct reflection of of what WrestleMania 31 is going to be. A largely, again, forgettable show. And again, I emphasize, it almost seems like the WWE is resigned to their fate. They've accepted the hand that they've dealt themselves, and they're not really bound or determined to do anything to change it. So you just sit there and watch this week's show, and you're looking repeatedly like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, for example, this whole shit with Paul Heyman. Now, I know, again, I'm in the vast minority here because I'm going to speak ill upon anything relating to Paul Heyman, most especially anything involving his promo work, because we know he's a god and he's incredible on the mic. Well, at some point in time, can't we sit there and say that a lot of his promos sound exactly the fucking same? Even if they are good in structure and even if they are really good in execution and Paul Heyman really understands how to deliver they are still the same. They are almost always fundamentally the same. We'll knock others for him for that, but Paul Heyman does it in his genius and his God. No, it's fucking stupid. And in particular, this freaking promo here, again, you've got Brock Lesnar actually making an appearance. You've got Brock Lesnar in the freaking ring. And this is how we decide to best utilize the undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Champion is to have him sit there and look like a sandwich selling goof for 10 or 15 fucking minutes. And all the while, Paul Heyman is ranting and raving and bringing this up. Oh, he's bringing up UFC. I'll shut the fuck up. How about we focus on WWE? Stop talking about shit that doesn't pertain to WWE. This whole thing, oh, it's the reality here. Of course, the hardcore fans, the smirks, if you will, We'll fucking love this. Get our rocks off to it because we think, oh, this is insider shit. Oh, this is really awesome and incredible. No, it's fucking stupid. Yet again, another blown opportunity to do something between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. You have him in the same fucking building, and this is how you decide to utilize Brock Lesnar. Again, like you so often have. 
And this whole shit of Heyman's microphone cutting off. Oh, because again, that was so genius when they did it with Punk in 2011, right? Right? No. They'll lose interest, drop it, and never explain what actually happened. It's fucking stupid. Just like this feud between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns is fucking stupid. Just like Brock Lesnar being the WWE World Heavyweight Champion has been fucking stupid. I'll tell you how bad and stupid this is. The thought of Lesnar as the champion heading into WrestleMania. And Reigns, or frankly anybody else, doesn't matter if it's Daniel Bryan, Dean Ambrose, you know, freaking who else. You could throw Bray Wyatt in there. You could throw Ryback in there. Maybe Randy Orton even in there. It doesn't matter. Anybody going up against him would be stupid. How the fuck could anybody thrive or succeed or excel in this type of environment? This is how bad it is. When I saw the promo package for Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 31, like that was the major hype piece, I laughed my ass off. Like, you know, full out of the belly laughter. This is the main event. For WrestleMania 31. And instead of instilling anger in me or getting me to feel the chills up and down my body, you know, really grabbing my attention, it made me laugh. Like, not even a little. Like, laugh my ass off laugh. And again, it's not just because of Roman Reigns. And if you think Roman Reigns is the biggest or only problem, with this WWE World Heavyweight Championship main event at WrestleMania 31, you are a fucking idiot. There are far bigger problems, and the biggest problem of all revolves around the actual champion himself, Brock Lesnar. Again, as referenced so many times in the past by me, especially. He went from being a special attraction to no attraction to now the rare times he does bother to fucking show up. He's the wrong kind of attraction. I don't know what the WWE is trying to do here. Are they trying to pull this shit out there and throw it out with Lesnar so that way maybe they hope that fans will get the idea this is Lesnar's last night so at WrestleMania they'll join up and they'll get behind Roman Reigns? You're probably more likely at this point to just have people boo both of them and boo the whole fucking match out of the building. Please help me understand this. Ryback doesn't even get an entrance on Raw, but Kane and Big Show get a whole featured thing after the match. Why are Kane and Big Show still any type of significance at all to the WWE? Why does WWE think we fucking care? Why does anybody think we would fucking care about this? Oh no, Stephanie sent Kane and Big Show home. Good fucking riddance. These guys need to go. Retire. Bye-bye. Sayonara. See you. We're tired of these asshats. They could go away for a long time as far as I'm concerned, but you know, right again next week, they'll be right back and Big Show will probably turn his fucking character again. I'm sorry, but you're not going to convince me that this IC title build is anything other than the suck in the fuck. Everything involving this match coming up at WrestleMania 31 is stupid. The fact that certain participants have to be involved with this is stupid. No, do not get fooled by the fucking spot fest and say, this is great and this is awesome. No, it is fucking stupid. I still don't understand why more Daniel Bryan or Dolph Ziggler fans aren't upset about this fact. You know, not only are these guys in a throwaway second-tier match at WrestleMania, they're not even the featured parts or components of this. The only real featuring that Daniel Bryan get was other than the cool moment where he could sit there and uh, see Connor's family when he came to the ring, is after beating Wade Barrett, he gets beat down by Wade Barrett. That's how you're featuring Daniel Bryan. And Dolph Ziggler, child, please. And like I've mentioned in an earlier video this week, the only thing I care about with the IC title is our truth. The one entertaining and compelling component of this whole thing is our truth. And the fact of the matter is the only person that I care to see win that IC title come WrestleMania 31 is our truth. Give Divas a chance. Give Divas a chance. I have a question for you. Does a Diva even have an officially announced match at WrestleMania yet? Now, granted, that might be coming, and I haven't seen it yet. Maybe they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. But here's how we decide to give the Divas a chance. We get let AJ and who was it, Summer, have like a five-minute really crappy match, and then Natalia and Naomi as part of this whole clusterfuck of, well, we got everybody back here. Send them all out. They get like a minute and a half or two, because that's really giving Divas a chance, right? Again, if you're not going to care about them, WWE, why have them? With that said, if you are going to have them, why not care about them? Because they can appeal to a segment of your audience 
that you largely leave out, that is the 18 to 34 year old males. If they're going to be under your umbrella, why not give them a chance? But if you're not going to give them a chance, then why fucking have them? We need something to inspire the people. We need something to sit there and grab the mainstream's attention. Well, Vince, Vincey Poos, I have a tremendous idea. A real stroke of dumb genius, if you will. I tell you what, we are marketing towards the 5 to 10 year old demographic. Yeah, so what does that mean, Kevin? Well, Vince, you look lovely today. And I tell you, I have your image from that muscle and fitness cover all over my bathroom. It is a glorious thing, indeed. Here's my idea. What better way to appeal to the kids? <laughs> I got I got to get, this is a big one. Wiz Khalifa. That's what the kids want nowadays. You're right. We need Wiz Khalifa. He's the type of guy that'll bring the older fans in. He's the type of guy that appeals to kids. He's the type of guy that everybody can relate to. He's the one that'll fuck your bitch and then wear her clothes like he's Prince or something. Amen. Now that is sports entertainment. I couldn't agree any more, Vince. I say not only have him appear, but let's give him eight or some minutes of just an incomprehensible rap concert. Terrific. Sign him up! Basically, I think I've just summarized the whole booking strategy and production meeting for Vince and Kevin Dunn and what they decided they were going to do uh, with Wiz Khalifa's appearance on Raw. They gave him a concert. And yes, I mean this literally. I would have rather seen a rap concert from Wizdow than Wiz Khalifa. You're appealing towards kids, so you decide to bring in Wiz Khalifa. And like I said, seriously, and Wiz Khalifa is just one representation of modern mainstream rap and the ridiculous bullshit that it fucking is. You are not Prince. Stop sitting there and pretending to fuck other people's bitches, but actually just wearing their goddamn clothes instead. You look like idiots. Wiz Khalifa looks like a moron. Him, Lil Wayne, and all these other idiots that wear these mom jeans need to go the fuck away from the rap game. Now, I've tried to warn Rusev, run away and hide, run away and hide. Oh no, I'm the Bulgarian brute that is a Russian sympathizer. I am not scared of John Cena. It is WrestleMania time, bitch. Everybody should be terrified of the John Cena monster and the John Cena experience, and you found that out this week. Now, I know that a lot of people are going to trash all over this and crap all over this, and as well you should. With that said, I do have to point out that in past years, if this would have been somebody like an Austin, where somebody would have gotten something over on him, Austin would have come out and stunned like 15 people, we'd be beating off to it talking about how it's the most magnificent thing ever. Uh, it was kind of stupid then, even though it was pre presented and produced in a much better way and came across as much better television. Now, it's just more of the same old shit. The Cena monster strikes again. And it's not even just involving Cena. It's this whole notion that as soon as you start to show any vulnerability or weakness with this character at all, the WWE not only has to try and wipe that out immediately, but they try to overcompensate by going too strong with him. You had something here with the whole Cena doubt crap. And of course, you never go with it. I still don't know why they were going with this whole approach of Cena not having a match at WrestleMania because nobody in their right minds, even little kids, was going to sit there and think that Cena wouldn't wrestle at WrestleMania. I mean, that's just stupid. The best way you could have sold that would be not to have Cena on any of the fucking Raw shows leading up to WrestleMania until maybe the go-home show. Then you could have really sold that. You could have had J&J uh, &J security preventing Cena from entering the building, Triple H and Stephanie saying, no, you're not welcoming. You know, shit like that. Stuff that could have potentially told a story. Instead, what you've done is you've tried to take a lot of the heat away from Rusev by not, not only having Cena submit him with the weakly applied STF to the point where Rusev passes out, but then you make sure that he gets the spot to be able to pour water on him to wake him up and then put Rusev back in the move until he taps out. So let me get this straight. 
Rusev can't even beat Cena via a tap out. He's got to sit there and hit him with a cross shot and then wait for Cena to pass out. But in one segment here, Cena can not only make him pass out, but revive him back to consciousness and then make him tap out. This is why John Cena is stupid. This is why the WWE is stupid. Now Cena has got his revenge. What fucking point is there to having the match at WrestleMania? I've already seen Cena get one over big time on Rusa. Not just a little bit of a comeback, but all the way comeback. Why the fuck would I need to see the match now? What is really a shame is that the WWE has put Bray Wyatt into an incredible lose-lose, no way to win type of situation. You've got this guy coming out and doing some really good things. He's cutting some incredible promos, even though he was more of botch Wyatt in this week's Raw promo, frankly, than anything else. Um, you know, this guy, for the most part, has been money on the mic. And he's the type of interesting, compelling character, unique character that the WWE desperately needs. But they're throwing him into a situation where he doesn't really benefit. Like, look, here's another example. He's doing some good work, minus the botches in his promo on Raw. And then you have in this whole thing about whether or not The Undertaker's going to answer. And, and then he does. And we're getting into the whole mind games thing. And, you know, the crowd is kind of like, mm. You get the pops for the gong, and then that's about it. And it's just a shame because this match was a year too late. As is so often the case with the WWE, they're just off the mark. And they don't get it. And they don't understand it. And I don't think they realize just how little people care about this match. Because if you bring back Undertaker now and he beats Bray Wyatt again, what was the point of having Brock Lesnar in the streak? If you bring The Undertaker back just to have him lose to Bray Wyatt, why would you do that? The guy won at 21 consecutive WrestleManias, and now you've had him lose two in a row. So that kind of diminishes the streak that way, and you start to make Taker look old. And, you know, especially when a lot of people probably would have rather have seen The Undertaker versus Sting at WrestleMania 31, myself most especially included, because at least I could sit there and say, you know, hey, I can get caught up with this. And this whole notion of, well, why it's a slower type of worker so maybe Taker can have a good match with him, who the fuck knows? And based off of what you saw last year, you really confident in that? Can you really take that chance? I mean, I'm just saying. And, again, it's just this whole notion of Taker being held out until WrestleMania. This is entirely different than what they did in 2004 where going back to Survivor Series 2003, Kane helped bury The Undertaker in that buried alive match at Survivor Series. And then starting at the Rumble, they were teasing Taker and they were going with it, but Taker didn't appear until WrestleMania 20. Entirely different situation, entirely different time, and entirely different place. Now, this apparent decision did not have Taker appear until WrestleMania 31 just shows how badly out of touch this company is. You're going to bring Taker back but you're not even going to bother to have him show up on television at any point in time until WrestleMania 31. Unless this is the WWE's own way of acknowledging that they went into this and they now realize it was a fucking mistake. And they hope that they get the people so caught up in Taker actually showing up at WrestleMania 31 that can gloss over a lot of the other deficiencies with this. Because again, there are a lot of deficiencies. And I think the main event of Raw just really perfectly encapsulated this week's show and so many things about this road to WrestleMania. I think it really did. For some reason, somebody involved with WWE decided to go this slow burn angle with Orton turning on Rollins and the Authority. Don't know why. He had already been gone for four fucking months, basically. Why anybody felt that they needed to slow burn this shit when it's been cooking on simmer for months is beyond me. But again, it's just because the WWE doesn't have a clue. And when you look at WrestleMania 31 and this road to WrestleMania 31, you can clearly see that playing out. So it finally happens. And what better way to emphasize Randy Orton and the RKO out of nowhere and tie into that trend of a few months ago with the RKO out of nowhere finds than to launch into some ridiculously long 10 plus minute beatdown of Seth Rollins, which culminates with Randy Orton finally breaking a table and putting Rollins through the table with an RKO. This is kind of similar to the Cena Rusev situation in some ways. Orton's got his revenge now. 
mean, it wasn't like he hit one RKO and then got out of town. I mean, he beat the shit out of the dude for 10 minutes and then RKO'd him through a table. Why would I want to pay money to see this match at WrestleMania now? Why would I still need to get behind Orton? Why would I think that Orton needs my help in over to, order to overcome Seth Rollins? Why do I think that this would be in any way a good way to build up interest into what should be a good match at WrestleMania 31? You've given so much of it away now. There's no point in watching. I mean, and really, honestly, when you look at it, can you really see any way at this point in time that Rollins beat Orton? I mean, again, it's just the whole notion of you're giving this shit away. You're just basically blowing your load, and it's not working. So now, why would anybody need to fucking see Cena versus Rusev when you've clearly established that Cena is going to beat him? And if Cena didn't beat him, then you would be calling bullshit on it. And now, based off of how badly Randy Orton beat the shit out of Seth Rollins in a heel-type fashion, you sit there in the same thing again. You say, why the hell do I need to see this match at WrestleMania? Randy Orton's already got, got his revenge. Or Rollins has gotten his comeuppance. And that's the whole problem with the WWE. They just don't get it. And you can clearly see it on this week's show. And you can clearly see it on this whole road to WrestleMania. This was a bad Raw. It's just three hours of my life that I'll never get back. I mean, I almost didn't even do the Raw review this week. It was, it was just that bad. What is there to really talk about that I haven't talked about before? If this is the same type of show next week, I can guarantee you I won't be doing a Raw review because why? What's the point? I'll just be regurgitating and rehashing bullet points of shit that I've already talked about and tried to warn you about for weeks and months now. This is bad. And no, I don't buy the whole bullshit logic from a WWE sheep apologist like Jim Ross that, well, even if the build-up to it's not always the best, it's still the show and it can still deliver. No, idiot. This is not like the Super Bowl. And frankly, the whole analogy of, well, I didn't have a horse in the race with Seattle and New England, but still, um, pretty much almost every year, if you're a fan of an NFL team, you don't have a horse in the race. But usually the Super Bowl is a Super Bowl in part because of the way it's built up to over the course of two weeks. You have a whole regular season before that and the playoffs before that to build up to this fucking moment, that fucking game. And especially when you look at this year, you had Seattle and New England. You had all types of intrigue on so many different levels. Two teams chasing history. Two teams that have their own forms of controversy. I assure you, the build-up to this year's Super Bowl was really, really fucking good. It got attention. And it delivered. And the game delivered. The build-up is a big part to WrestleMania. They call it WrestleMania season for a reason. And this whole WrestleMania season, in large part, has one big, one big abortion, one big huge fucking miss. And no people just simply going out there at WrestleMania 31 and spot besting the fucking way through the show does not make it a good fucking show. It's WrestleMania. It's that one show above everyone else that is supposed to be different. It is that one show above everything else that is supposed to stand above the rest. And instead, it feels like the WWE is building up to a filler pay-per-view. It's that bad. Yes, it is.